-hmm. So, why, Odyssey, do you not just include this little anchor? This is just, a user sent me these. These are the LCD, LCD i3s? LCD 3i's? No, no, no. LCD i3s. And they're the big brother uh, of, like, the i signs that I did years ago, but yet the little brother of the LCD i4s, which are, like, $2,500. So these are only one gemstone in the title, Zeos, a thousand some odd dollars. And they're a planar in-ear, open back. Uh, and if you know anything about the original eye signs, I did those probably two and a half years ago. I love them. I, I love them. I had the 20s and the 10s, and I gave my uh, a set of 10s to my friend. And I had the 20s, and I used them, and they were perfect right up to the point where everyone realized that the lightning cable that the unit came with, oh, you could plug it in right to your iPhone. You plug it into your iPhone, use the lightning cable with a little built-in amplifier, all of a sudden, they sound really good. Not just good, like really fucking good. Like, holy shit. And they were DSP correcting the absolute flaws in the headphone, or I guess your speaker. Um, I liked them regardless, but then I started pluck, fucking around with EQ, like just in what I was doing. I was on the computer and I had to plug into an amp and I was literally, I tried to match what they, because someone, they won't tell you, Odyssey won't tell you what the box is doing, little DSP correction boxes. When you're on USB, it's like, oh yeah, just run on this, scrape. But uh, someone reverse engineered what the what the actual values were. And it was like negative nine decibels at some places. Like plus six, negative eight, plus five. It was like a fucking jigsaw. And uh, to the best of my ability, the closest matching of thing, I did it. And I went, oh my God, these sound amazing. But I can't use them because I want to use them on a regular amplifier and I can't unless I run this crazy EQ because now they sound so much better than they did. So when the person sent me these, he was nice enough to include an adapter that goes to USB-C, because my phone is, you know, an Android. And so lightning plugs into that. They only include fucking lightning for some reason. They, um, he also included this, which I'm pretty sure doesn't come with. But this is the uh, Bluetooth adapter. So I just plug it in and you wear this around your head. I just think that would just probably be real uncomfortable to try to get to these buttons where this is. Although I have no problem with making these things wireless. Uh, and honestly, it does a really nice job of this. They should actually make this for their headphones, because I'd be fine with that. And it came with the standard cable, which is the one that the original iSigns came with. Usually, you had to pay 50 bucks more, I think, to get it with the lightning cable. But once the secret was out that you needed the DSP correct, everyone just got the lightning cable version. So here's a regular one. Um, I haven't fucked bothered, because I know these need to be fucking corrected. So, FUBAR 2000 on my phone, uh, adapter, wire, Here's the little control box, which is actually surprisingly nice. Like, you'd think, like, Odyssey wouldn't... Like, this should be on, like, most portable things. Because you've got a raised plus and a flat negative, And the center button is, is a detent, and this one's raised. And I have no idea what this button does. It must be an, an iPhone thing, because I can't get it to do anything. The center button is play pause. Or hold for uh, the voice assistant, or double tap for next track. I can't get last track to work. Du triple tapping just brings it to the next track and pauses it. So I don't know if it's missing that option or that maybe this is supposed to do it or just go back. I can't get it to go back. But you know, it just controls the phone's volume up there. And this is through the adapter. This is pretty fucking impressive. I don't know if I can link this exact adapter. It says KZB123A0. That might be the wire name. But um, if you've never seen these things, here's what they look like. Thumb-sized planar magnetic uh, gooseneck. I actually am using the tips that it came with because the holes are so big. That opening is massive. Usually I, I, um, I put on my Dakoni tips because I like my Dakoni foams. But I, you, you probably can if you spent all week trying to stretch it over there. So it comes with a plethora of very oddly thick giant tips which obviously it should and these actually are ribbed for my pleasure um and they hold in and then you have a selection of these clips that go around your ear so you actually put around your ear and then try to squeeze this in there because it's very awkward everything about this is awkward i managed to get around it with um if you watched my old eye sign video i literally had foam attached and weird i had to cut the, the pad out but 
I got them to work. I got them to work here on the desk. I, I, I tried to use them like walking around. You'd have to really dick through. Move these wires. The plethora, I said plethora twice now, of shit it comes with. Here's a charging cable for that. Here are the tips. And then it's got a bunch of these. I'm not sure if they came with it or he bought them. Here are all the different size. No, it must be all the different shape. Actually, they're all the same shape for the clips because apparently you're going to break them so they give you like a fuckload of them. And then they also give you, where are they? Hold on, I'm digging through. I'm digging through. Here's all your tips. Yeah, yeah, they give you these little silicone fuck my dingers It's a very, very complicated scientific process to make, call them that. Like these things, which are designed to go over it, it, and then that would hook into your ear lobe thing inside. And I'm just like, ah. For $1,000, I could buy like nanas. And they're just IEMs and they go in your ears. The question is, do these sound as good as nanas? They sound different. I was going to sit here and, and literally try to like explain the difference between one thing or the other. Or, like, directly compare the sound between something like, like this and... What are the other $1,000 babies that I love? There's the, the, the C-Audio Neos. Those things are great. Then there was a slightly more expensive... Uh, yeah, I'll link two or three $1,000 IMs. I, don't remember, I can't remember names anymore. My, the first thing that hits you in this is bass. And I mean bass, like low-end fuckery. Just, uh, it wasn't every track. It wasn't like every track sounds bassy now. But I got to one that was like, oh, this is hip hop. They're going to turn the bass up to 11 and then smash you with it. And it smashes hard. Because it's a thumb sized planar driver in your ear. Now, that's not its only parting piece. It also does really good fine detail. It's a thousand dollar revision of it. Obviously DSP corrected with all this shit. Um... Everything feels very close, though. Like, it feels like I'm wearing a planar headphone, a big, expensive, you know, angry planar headphone on my head, as an IM. But it's not very wide. Like, I've actually had IMs sound wider than this. And you would think that it's back to, say, planar sitting around, you know, they could do that. And I... It's, it's an aggressive sound. You put it in, and you put Lord on, you put something else on, and it sort of hits you in the feels, but not like the emotional feels, like the, oh God, feels. Which Odyssey tends to do with their higher end line, like the LC3s and LC4s, I think are sort of shouty. It's a, look how good I am. Look at the quality of the fucking, it's like, ah. That's why I like LCDX, they're a little more laid back. These are not laid back, not even slightly laid back. Um, so you're gonna be dealing with that. But overall, $1,000, for this probably worth it if you if you've ever experienced like the gold planar ones and those are the gl20s and the original i signs tens or 20s and you're like you know what i want the next step up this certainly is that there's definitely more refinement to the driver they've they've tweaked the dsp you got you got to run it that's another thing you can run it with just a cable off of any amp that is not its full potential this little shit fucking box that it comes with for 50 extra dollars that's the one you want that's the one that's going to make you the happiest. So the, the negatives are you basically have to run it off for USB adapters or lightning. If you really want to get everything out of it, or you got to buy the Bluetooth adapter, which I think some people are going to be like, ah, but I don't want to run a Bluetooth ZS. I'm a fancy audiophile. Fine. Then you USB it and shut the hell up. You can plug this into your laptop, by the way. It's not just phones that can do it. Although it sounds really good. You have to get the fit to work. And it took me a while on the other ones. I just sort of like got these to the point where I could wear them. And I'm like, fuck it. Because I kept the 20s and I kept the 20s. These are going back. So the fact these are going back made me like plug one or two of these on, adjust this angularity here, different size tips, different types of tips because they have the regular smooth ones and they have these, these ridged ones. And I'm like, all right, I'm just going to get them to fit enough that I can review them. And I got them as long as the wire, because the wire is a bit stiff, honestly. Even the fact that, like, this is a, as a stiff a little like, cable. They could do better in, in like, this department. Like, I know it's, like, like just, this one's a little flat ribbon cable, but I feel like everything's a little low quality for $1,000. I am 
cables are usually like these beautiful baller things that it's like the, the weaves and the softness and ah and this is just sort of like yeah whatever yeah whatever wires we're only concerned with this and these are plastic shells so it's not like they get, you don't want them to make them out of metal or anything fucking higher end than that it, well there's the magnets by the way that is that is a lot of magnetism that they're holding each other just together so yeah planars bro how do they work putting them in is not that hard you just go over the ear and in and over the ear and in see that one didn't seat right let's see if this one seats right immediately nope it's like my ears need to have a certain moisture level so that the tips stick so let's let's just manipulate them a little bit up up in pressing in with the finger just fingering it in that's loud i'm gonna lower that yeah, I could hear every little detail in this song. This song has fake vinyl grain, like vinyl clicks and pops. And they're inside my head. They're like completely fucking just smashing me in the ear holes. And I think that's what you want. I think. These are not a laid back, like, oh, I'm just going to chill. These are like, you want to impress somebody. You put them, put on the LCD i3s on them. And you'd be like, hey, here's a song you've heard a million times. Now hear it for the first time. Um piped directly to your ear holes. The, the narrow sound stage gets to me. <sighs> like it's accurate, the imaging is crazy accurate between where I'm hearing it from, like across the space. But it never has that like, when you put on big planars, they can sound bigger than they are. I think it's just a restriction you, you can't get around because of the the way it is they are open back by the way so if you just open back you get the reference um if you're just wearing them it's like oh oh i can hear everything it sounds pretty good and you put it on and like oh now there's music playing and i can still hear everything. if you play it quiet enough you could hear everything oh tourist wait this it's got like a like a do 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 and it feels like someone turned the bass boost up a little bit on like one of my favorite iams but then I could also hear straight through it. Run the jewels. See, I'm adjusting it and now it's fun. It's better. It's, it's got such a small tolerance to placement that if it's just not perfect, it doesn't sound as good. And you're like, oh, why did I spend money on these? these are the then you get the placement right. You get it to like lock it and seal on your ears or in your ears. And it's worth its price. But as soon as you wiggle your head and the wire drags across, I just now it's falling out. I, I'd have to really, really seriously sit down with like a million tips and try to get it to fit perfectly and then stay. Because just because it has this doesn't mean it's staying. It, it, it's, it hinges out of my ear. So that that that's not moving, but this is just doing its thing and it's like, like go in, stay in. Just permanently glue them into your ears. That's what you're gonna end up doing. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna I was gonna do this a combo review of this and the other set he sent, which are the Cardas uh, A8 Anniversary Edition, which I'm just going to tell you these are very nice. Hold on, in fact, I haven't I haven't listened to them in like a week. I'm gonna pause the video. I'm gonna make it a little tack on to the end because these are like three hundred fifty dollars, and I want to talk about the cable. So one second. I don't know if it's because I'm coming off of the LCD i3s. But I was I started to say, oh, these are nice uh, and they're okay. They're nicely built. The wire is nice. It's a Cardas wire. But these have like nothing going on that makes me want to listen to them. They're so polar opposite of like that. They're just dark and occasionally they have like, oh, I could hear the sound. No, nope, further away. Ah. <sighs> I guess it depends so much on music. They're like veiled. <sighs> Three fifty is like mm 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 mm. Thigh audio anything. Zios, figure out a thigh audio three fifty dollar. Three fifty dollars thigh audio something. Legacy five will just destroy these as far as like sound quality. I put my own tips in them, obviously. I'm playing around with high and low Z on these things there to see if I can get it to change in a beneficial way. 
They had a decent low end rumble for a bit. Like a couple songs. I was like, oh yeah, okay. Craddies into the labyrinth. The louder I turn them up, the more acceptable they get, but they're so in your face with this dullness that I it's just like my am I bothering? So so meh meh on these. Now, Arcadas, Card, Car, Cardas, where the hell's the thing? This logo, the seashell. Ugh. Um, this, I sell seashells by the seashore. They're mostly a cable manufacturer. So when they put out an IEM, you have to question shit. They're very heavy looking. They're very heavy, dense things, these pods. And so like, that's interesting. The wire is permanently attached because why would you ever change the wire? It's a Cardis wire. Obviously, it's exactly what you want. You won't need any sort of stupid adapter because 2.5 is the only one you want. So the owner included a 2.5 uh, female to 4.4 Pentacon, luckily. I kind of like the right angle. I am not opposed to this right angle, although this doesn't flex at all. This is like filled with steel. So there's an, a permanent 45 degree bend into what can only be described as like a Dr. Seuss wire. Like, it's so weird. It, it's got like a, a winding wrap around it, but it's a soft wire in the middle, like you could squeeze it, and it flexes. Like, I don't, I don't hate this. I don't hate this. I wish it came for other headphones. And then you get this, which is like, okay, so you got a permanently affixed cables to the actual IEMs. Then you got the little slider, has the Kadas logo. Then you get a three and a half millimeter female. So you could legitimately get other cables for it, but then you have to buy, because there's a little notch right here if you want to get it to lock in place and not spin, which doesn't actually work, by the way. So then you get three and a half millimeter that leads down to this thing, which leads down to the two and a half. It's very strange. I don't hate this system, Although I do hate the fact that the wires are permanently attached to the IMs, which are a nice blue. I didn't point out how nice a blue these are. Um, little red and blue indicators, different sizes, which pisses me the hell off. But nice strain relief. I just wish they sounded good. I mean, for, for 350, I would pass. Um, what could you use this for? What could you, could I use this for anything? Like this sort of cable? Cause it's, it's really, it's fucking nice. I just know it's overpriced as hell. This is gonna be overpriced as hell, Cardas. Cardas. Um, and actually all this is rubberized too. So I don't hate this bit. It certainly blows away the Odyssey for fucking cable like quality. Oh, it's a Fio adapter. I didn't even realize it said Fio on it. Does Fio sell this? I wouldn't be surprised if Fio sold this. I've just never seen it before. Twists are a little uneven. So yeah, these are a meh, and these are an excellent if you can get them to fit right. So that's, that's it. I'm just gonna give these a meh, interesting cute wire concept. I like the way it feels and looks, but the sound is not there. This the sound is not there. I'm, I'm probably way biased because I've been listening to these, and if I gave these like two days of an un unadulterated listening, I might find some magic in there. But at this point, if you can't perform the moment I need you to perform, get the fuck off my table. These, however, you put on and you know you're listening to a thousand dollars in IMs. So, or in ear monitors. Uh, that's it. I'll, I'll link to these bolts still on Amazon. Link to those, link to this. I'll see if I can find a link to an adapter. I don't know if any USB C to the lightning adapter will work or it's a specific one that's designed for like audio, but there's that. Um, I want to thank the person who sent them. I have to get them back to him also. Like soon, so clock is ticking. That wallpaper. Well, it's open back, um, is available in the description. Uh, Patreon and subscribe star, you get to see these reviews early. You get to participate in the yard sales, which these will not be in because they're going back to their owners. And you might even get to see sound demos. Certainly all the block sound demos will be available to my $5 patrons and up, or any patron. I don't know if I make it every patron or just $5 and up, because then I have to do a whole other tier thing. Basically, if you patronize my channel, the minimum is usually five bucks because you want to see reviews early and you want to participate in the yard sales and you want access to all the band sound demos. The band sound demos, they're all been martyred by the YouTubes. Actually, they were martyred by the lawyers from Japan. But then YouTube was like, eh, and I'm like, eh, so I'm like, oh, I'll put them on the fucking thing. So if you want to hear my old sound demos, 
you want to see reviews early, and you want to participate in yard sales, three reasons to join my Patreon. There's a fourth reason, a $10 reason. If you join for $10 or higher, you get the behind-the-scenes Telegram chat where you can ask me any questions you want because I'll read the comments occasionally, and I'll occasionally hang out in my public Discord, and I'll occasionally hang out on the public Telegram. But if you really want to, like, quiz me on speakers, headphones, surround sound systems, theories, concepts, hey, Zios, what's coming up in the future, if you want to be in the know and behind the scenes... $10 put you in the behind the scenes private telegram chat. And that's where you want to be. So there's that. There's me. And that's it. I'm done. Uh, are we done? Am I done? Good. I'm going to wrap all this stuff up. I'm going to go buy Chewbacca some food. And then I'll we'll see you in two days. No sound numbers associated with anything here, unfortunately. Or fortunately, depending on how it looks. And uh, goodbye. Hope you enjoyed your stay. Um, what, did you, what were you daydreaming about while you were watching this? Tell me your daydreams. I used to daydream about awesome stuff as a kid.